Powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's Football at Four. All right, Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast, and it is brought to you this hour by PropSwap, where America buys and sells sports bets. PropSwap. Download the PropSwap app today, PropSwap.com. I'm Mike Gill. This is the Sports Bash live on 97.3 ESPN. Football at Four. Andrew DeCecco is here. Of course, the Eagles at training camp. They are less than a week now from the start of the preseason. They will take on the Pittsburgh Steelers right here Thursday night on 97.3 ESPN. And you can, of course, listen to all the action of Eagles football this season right here. And, of course, Andrew DeCecco is here uh, as the Eagles training camp continues. Day uh, 8 was yesterday. They do have the day off uh, today. Uh, They will be back at it over the weekend. And, of course, Andrew was there earlier this week. We'll get some observations from him right now on this football at four. Andrew, what's going on, man? Hey, Mike, how you doing? All is good. And, of course, uh, uh, we are getting closer to the start of uh, Eagles preseason. Last night we saw the opening of the season. Now, how much of the game did you consume last night? Uh, not very much. Uh, it's just I'm a football junkie, and I actually really do enjoy the preseason as I like to see a lot of the younger players buy for roster spots. And, uh, you know, with the whole draft process, I'm very invested in how these guys are panning out with their respective teams. But, I mean, last night I just watched to see how Alex Highsmith, the pass rusher who I was an advocate of through the pre-draft process, how he's doing. He's settling into a starting role in place of Bud Dupree. It looks comfortable. And then uh, Isaiah McCoy and um, – and Aaron Parker, two wide receivers on the on this one on the Steelers, one on the Cowboys. So nothing, nothing too crazy. Well, let's uh, take a look at some of the things that you saw this, saw this week uh, at Eagles camp, and uh, let's start with uh, the running back battle back there because there's a lot of interesting names in the running back room. Uh, obviously, Miles Sanders at the top, but kind of handicap what's going on in your opinion behind him. Yeah, and, and, I, and I highlighted these for those who haven't checked it out, a comprehensive overview on my observations for training camp all month on InsideTheBirds.com. But when I saw the running back situation and kind of the way that I viewed it, the spark notes version of it, if you will, was mostly Miles Sanders taking the lion's share of the carries. I saw a lot of Jordan Howard. You saw a lot of Boston Scott. Some Kenny Gainwell sprinkled in there. Even some Jason Huntley, I would say, who showed some, springy, some springiness and some burst as well. Really excited to see him in the preseason. Didn't see much of Carry on Johnson. So you have to wonder how much he's even going to be a factor in the preseason if they're trying to preserve him or if he just really has fallen out of favor and they have other options in mind. Um, obviously, Sanders, we think, is the main guy. However, how do you see his – I mean, do you see him being 80% of the carry, 70 – you know, how, how much workload do you envision Miles Sanders getting? I, I think he shouldn't be he shouldn't be getting anything less than 18 touches a game when you look at his explosiveness and what he can bring uh, as far as a dimension out of the backfield and explosive dimension out of the backfield for to the offense. Um, he's I think that you're going to see more of a running back, not necessarily running back by committee, but you're going to see guys sort of slot into certain roles, or you're going to see Miles Sanders take the the majority of the work. But you're also going to see Jordan Howard take on that short yardage between the tackles, pounding, you know, pounding football within the tackles type of role. You're going to see Boston Scott and Kenny Gainwell sort of be those guys that can catch the ball out of the backfield, get them in space, and take advantage of their, you know, dynamic traits. And then, I mean, you, we'll see what happens if they keep five. You, you have someone like Jason Huntley or, or, or carry on Johnson or in the con- who suddenly become in the conversation. So they have a lot of different guys that I think are more so going to slot in the role. So I would see Miles Sanders probably taking about – 75% of the, of, of the touches on a given on any game. Yeah, I know that uh, people are excited to see what Sanders can do with a full season here. Also, uh, let's transition to how you saw, Andrew, uh, the tight ends being used. Because, obviously, Zach Ertz apparently isn't going to be going anywhere anytime soon. So, so how does he kind of work in with Dallas Goddard? How do they kind of balance those two? Well, you, you sort of have the best both worlds with Zach Ertz being that Sure-handed over the middle, not going to break a big play, not going to break a tackle or anything like that. But he sure-handed runs great routes. I think he's a better route runner than Dallas Goddard. But I think that Dallas Goddard gives them more of an explosive presence, someone who can uh, threaten vertically, someone who's going to break tackles, be more of a presence in the red zone, just a more physical player. 
but Zach Hurts has proven to be more durable, whereas, whereas Dallas Goddard plays a physical brand of football. It doesn't always lend itself to being available for a full slate of games. But Dallas Goddard is, is the better blocker. He's the one that I saw have a, a, an ex, a very – uh, it was very apparent that he had a continuity there with Jalen Hurts. He found him twice for scores in seven on seven period. Looked his way it was his first look a, a lot of times. And Dallas Goddard just is a big bodied guy that knows how to get open. He's going to go up there and come up with those contested catches and um, just a physical player at the catch at, attacks the catch point. So uh, I think you're going to see him be really start to break out as a household name this season and put his stamp on being a top 10 tight end in this league. Yeah, I know that uh, the tight end is going to be interesting to see how much, uh, you know, they utilize. Do they go 12 personnel, the double tight end look? Does that squeeze one of the receivers out? Uh, does Nick Sirianni kind of have to change what he thought he was going to do now that Ertz is here? I think that whole dynamic's interesting. Are any of the wide receivers forcing their way into the conversation to get more playing time? Of course, Watkins is, yeah. Is he a guy that's going to be, um, you know, third? Uh, you know, is he going to get regular reps? Is he a guy that's going to be uh, going to have a package? How do you see them kind of working him in then? Because I thought last year that Peterson, I know he only got a few reps, but Peterson did not do a good job of utilizing his skill set. Right, yeah. I, I don't know that he's going to see an extensive package. What I do think will happen, though, is you're going to see a heavy rotation on on the offensive skill players, you're going to see a lot of the receivers shuffling in and out of the lineup. But I think Wes Watkins has called out, has proven that he should have a role carved out for him this year, take advantage of his vertical dimension, his explosiveness after the catch. You saw what he was able to do uh, once you get the ball in his hands in the open field. Very uh, looks remarkably improved as a, as a route runner. Catches the ball really well. I thought he, he caught a, a contested ball at the goal line with Craig James draped all over him in seven on sevens. You know, just certain things, uh, areas of this game that felt, you know, much much more refined than last season when he looked was more of an overall prospect. I think he really looks like he took the attack the offseason, took it seriously, and it's really showing um, throughout the whole training camp and definitely with the practice I was there for on Wednesday. Now, Wednesday when you were there, uh, Andre Dillard got the start or got the reps with the first team. But from all accounts, that is a pretty wide gap between – him and Jordan Maialata, is that what you witnessed? Yeah, it is. And um, that's one thing I wanted to take note of when as soon as the practice got underway. He's going to take that starting left tackle spot. He's going to open practice as the starting left tackle. When it was Andre Dewar that day, but there's such a, a wide gap here between Jordan Maialata and Andre Dewar that, I, I, like I said before this whole battle started, they wanted, ideally, in a perfect world, I think they wanted Andre Dewar to win that job. I think they were going to give him every opportunity to do so, but it's just such a, a wide margin between the talent levels of the two players, the confidence level of the two players. Jordan Mailata has gotten infinitely better and in his progression just each season and seems to just have such a, 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 a an immensely higher upside. Andre Dewar, he, he said all the right things in the offseason, you thought you were really intrigued with what you with what you were going to see going into training camp, and it just really has not transpired onto the field. Um, you still want to see that toughness there that he doesn't. He, he struggles anchoring. He doesn't have that power. Um, whereas Jordan Mailata is just a people mover, just you know a freakish athlete, um, and really has not scratched the surface of how good he can be, which is really scary when you think about it. Yeah, I think uh, the Mailata. We were talking about this right before you came on, Andrew, which is. Obviously, if Dillard doesn't make it, I don't know, you classify him as a bust. But on the flip side, do you get points for and covering a guy in the seventh round who could end up being a franchise left tackle? Yeah, I think so. But, I mean, they start to cancel each other out when you look at a lot of the different whiffs. I mean, you can't whiff on a first round on, on a first round picker. You know, they should be a surefire starter, and it just not has not panned out. They got really lucky. It was more of a shot in the dark with uh, unearthing a Jordan Mylot, and that does not that doesn't always happen. But I think that uh, Jeff Stoutman deserves a lot more of the credit than let's say Howie Rosen, because Jeff Stoutman took a raw player who had never played the game played the game of football prior to the 2018 season, and him and Jordan really put the work in to get him to where he's at right now. And you saw him really start to turn the corner as he became more and more the more reps he got, the more I mean, remember he was really in a he was really a non-entity his first couple of seasons, struggled with back injuries and so on. 
but he just, I think he just put the work in on the field and in the meeting room and worked with Jeff Stoutland and you're seeing a finished product. And I don't even want to say it's a finished product really, because that'd be unfair because I think that he has, like I said, he has yet to scratch the surface. Yeah. Such an athletic talent. And when you look at somebody like Andre Dillard that really has not taken the next step of, or blossomed as, as a player, you, you just sort of wonder. And he's also two years older than Jordan Mylotta. I think a lot of people forget that because Andre Dillard was just drafted a couple seasons ago. He's 25 years old already, and you really don't know what you have there in him. And, in him. and I think he could be a player that, if it continues to go this way, could be someone that's sort of dangled out there at the end of the summer uh, because he doesn't offer guard versatility or anything like that. So you got to wonder if there's going to be a team out there that's looking to acquire his services and certain on the offensive line. All right. Uh, Andrew Checo Football 4, let's look at uh, defense. I know a lot of people, uh, Steven Nelson is here, and people are excited about that uh, because they have a guy that can is a veteran who has a track record opposite of Darius Slay, but Zach McPherson, the rookie cornerback, what are you seeing from him? Because reports have been pretty solid in the early going. Yeah, Zach McPherson's tough, physical, always around the football, very instinctive, uh, very poised for a rookie. You don't usually see a lot of rookies uh, sort of the light come on for them so quickly, especially playing corner uh, as a young player and transitioning to the pro level. So it's very encouraging what you see from him. I like, uh, you know, the fact that they don't have to throw him right into the fire and that it allows him to kind of, you know, not feel so pressured, I guess, to kind of force his, you know, self out onto the field he can just kind of play freely now and then if there's an injury he would have got these practice times got this rep so it seems like a pretty good situation uh what's going on for him there I would ask you I think the day you were there Darius Slay took the day off so did any of the other guys who got reps stand out um outside of Zach McPherson and Nelson not really I mean Michael Jaquette got uh so an increase in snaps. He had a bad defensive pass interference uh, on Tyree Jackson in the end zone on the Joe Flacco pass. Um, he's a grabby player, very long arms, but uh, he, you know he's physical. But I mean that that was the one thing that really stuck out. They were very unremarkable outside of that. I think Craig James is a player that the Eagles like. He's a really good gunner on special teams. Uh, I think he's going to carve out a role as a, he can play outside. He can be a good reserve there. I thought he showed a little bit in practice. Other than that, nothing too remarkable. I guess the last guy that, um, you know, kind of sticks out in this whole thing, which, you know, uh, you wrote about over at Inside the Birds in your observations, was a lot about Jalen Hurts. Uh, kind of an up-and-down day, and, you know, yesterday uh, they were asked about him. Uh, we're not there yet, but what you see, what you saw at camp, you're looking at the starting quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles, right? And how does he appear to look in these early practices? Um, it was he was sort of taking what the what the defense was giving him. He was taking a lot of uh, short underneath passes. Didn't really have a chance to uncork one deep until he hit Hightower on the left sideline. Hightower made a really good adjustment in the air to catch the football and keep his feet in bounds. Zach McPherson had fantastic coverage on him, but um, John Hightower just outleaped him for the football and that's, that's those type of things are going to happen. That was a great ball placement by Jalen Hurts. That was after uh, he threw uh, a really questionable pass over the middle that was, I'm not exactly sure who he was throwing it to, I don't recall, but it was right over the middle and Jacoby Stevens picked him off and he and he, he rebounded quickly to Jalen's credit and fired that pass to, to Hightower for the best, that was the best catch of the, of the, of the day by far. Um, and he also, uh, in team drills later on that day, fired a nice one over the middle kind of going the other direction to Greg Ward in a similar throw and Greg Ward made a nice, made a nice leaping reception there. So um, it, was, it was it was up and down. You know, I, I think he really locked into Dallas Goddard. That was evident that he's very comfortable. I think the tight ends are going to be really active this season. Uh, you wonder how different the receiving core is going to look with uh, Devontae Smith, and I think it's going to look much different because it adds another element to the offense. So it's kind of hard to judge it based on just one day. But I thought it was very tight end centric that day. Um, and then Jalen Rager, of course, came back yesterday uh, and rebounded with a fantastic catch in the back of the end zone. And... They're going to find ways to get him the football and sort of create a more explosive offense yeah. this year. So I, I, I think that uh, you saw the you saw the good and the and, and the not so good with Jalen Hurts. Well, and, and you mentioned a common theme. That's been the common theme uh, throughout the summer. You mentioned a more explosive offense. A lot of that might have to do, Andrew, with that front uh, five, the the offensive line, and by all accounts, you know, Mylotta 
Uh, you know, Adam yesterday was on. He said if he was ranking all the players, he thinks Mylotta might be the number one most impressive guy. Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey, Isaac Saramano, Brooks obviously uh, not back there yet. But if that line is healthy, everybody thinks it could be pretty good. And is that what you saw on Wednesday? Yeah, I think the line, well, first of all, has a lot of continuity. There's a brotherhood there. And you see a lot of the backup guys, the players who are young backups now that were forged by fire last season because they, they had to play out of necessity. And they're playing with a lot more um, poise and, and confidence, and they have that experience under their belt. So they're, you know, if they have to step in, they're willing to do so adequately. But right now, I think if that offensive line, as it's currently constituted, the starters, if they stay in place, if they stay healthy, right. it's going to be one of the best in football. And I was really impressed. I have to agree with Adam. I think Jordan Mailata was, was – when I left practice, that was one of the players that I came away with most impressed with. Also, Josh Sweat and Derek Barnett were pretty good. McPherson as well. Yeah, I, you know, I was uh, having this discussion this morning, and I said, look, uh, they asked me how many wins do I see this team having, and I said, look, if the offensive line is good, now I'll get your opinion on the defensive line because we've heard a lot of good things about Josh Sweat, Javon Hargrave. We know Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox. That means you should probably have a pretty good defensive line. If you're good on both sides of the line, does that mean you have a good team? More often than not, if, you, if you're strong in the trenches, that's going to yield positive results, right? I mean, that's where the game is won on both lines, and the Eagles do have a, a veteran-laden, uh, proven commodities on both lines. And I think the Eagles' defensive line is going to make life a lot easier for the back end. And they have a decent rotation. You, you, you have Ryan Kerrigan there, who's going to come off the bench. Teron Jackson's a player who flashed a little bit when I saw him there, too. He's going to be vying for a roster spot. Hmm. Uh, Josh Sweat is, is uh, and Derek Barnett are probably going to fight to the fight to the death there to see who becomes the starter on the on the uh, opposite Brandon Graham. I think Josh Sweat is set to explode, possibly a double digit sack guy, very long arms, fluid, athletic, good bend. Uh, Javon Hargrave has been another has been another player that's had a stellar camp that really is going to benefit now with a full off season. I think Fletcher Cox is going to be the beneficiary of not having to take those double teams and have a much more explosive player playing next to him with a full year in the system under his belt, uh, playing with the, with the Eagles, of course, is a different system. But I think uh, Hargrave's going to sort of burst on the scene this year and become the player that they envisioned him being when they brought him on as a free agent. So, I, so there's a lot to like there. I guess lastly, Andrew, being there uh, you know, this week and seeing the new coaching staff, what kind of impression did they leave for you? I, I was – Thoroughly impressed, Mike. I have to say, I, I really like the hands-on approach. I like the uh, willingness to get after a guy, to take it, someone, take a guy off to the side, and, and be unafraid to, to drill them on the fundamentals and the and the, the finer details, which we really have not seen a lot of player development with the previous regime. And I think it's going to be quite the contrary with this current coaching staff. Uh, you know, these they're all, they're constantly working with these guys. They're constantly in their ear and telling them what you know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, and I think you're going to see a, a lot more of a player development, and you're going to see a lot more structure and discipline this season with the coaches that they have in place. All right, Andrew DeCheco, football at four. The Eagles in action Thursday night, right here on 97.3 ESPN against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Football is back, and football at four never goes away. We take you all season, all off season. And into the preseason right now is where we are. Andrew DeCecco at A DeCecco NFL. Follow him in the Inside the Birds guys for football at four every day here on the Sports Bash. Have a great weekend, man. Yeah, man. Take care.